Our lesson for today will be looking at chemistry 1502. The topic for today is SN1 reaction. This is chemistry 1502. Lesson 101, let us start. SN1 is one of the nucleophilic substitution reaction we have. So far we've talked about SN2 and the reason why we started with SN2 it is much simple for us to understand SN1 if we understand um, SN2 reaction. Towards the end of this lesson series based on nucleophilic substitution we will be looking at comparison but as we continue with this SN1 lesson series we'll also relate our concepts with SN2 mechanism. So, so far we know that SN2 simply means that substitution nucleophilic by molecular. That is why we have two which is represented by by. So this one is substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Unimolecular simply means that we only have one molecule involved in a transition state which we refer it to the rate limiting step while in SN2 we have two molecules involved in transition state whereby we have the living group leaving the substrate and also the nucleophile are taking the substrate so one of the important things you should know about SN1 nucleophilic substitution is that it involves two steps whereby SN2 simply involves one step and you should also know that there are some reactions whereby instead of two we are going to have three steps looking at examples we will explain this in detail you should also note that SN1 reaction also involves the attack of the nucleophile attacking the electrophile but in this case you call it a carbocat ion and if you can remember relating this to SN2 reaction we have this trend here and by the way it is also based on alkyl halides then you should know that under SN1 nucleophilic substitution reaction the SN1 reaction works better with the tertiary alkyl halide followed by secondary primary and methyl if you can remember very well SN2 the tertiary alkyl halides don't usually work or it is not possible for the reaction because of steric hindrance let us go ahead and look at SN1 mechanism so suppose that we have a substrate which we can say it's R bonded to the living group and then it undergoes SN1 mechanism so step number one you should know that it is when we have the formation of carbocat ion we should also refer the step to a rate limiting and rate limiting you should know that it's a step that is very slow it requires energy for the step to occur so what happens is that when we form our carbocat ion this is the process whereby the living group leaves the substrate normally under SN2 reaction we would show the arrows showing the leaving of the living group which is the migration of the living group and also the attack of the nucleophile but in SN1 reaction we have a limiting I mean a rate limiting which is also named or called carbocat ion process 
where we form carbocation. It's a process on its own. And then we have our R, which will be positively charged because you can see that this bonding pair of electron will be living with our living group. Then we have our living group having a negative charge. So in this case, we say this is a carbocat ion. This process is a rate limiting, whereby we form this. Before the nucleophile can attack, we need to form a carbocat ion. So this will be our living group, and then this will be our carbocat ion. And then step number two, it's where our nucleophile will be attacking the carbocat ion. Our carbocat ion. By the way, carbocat ion simply means that it's a carbon that has a positive charge. So we react with our nucleophile. This is where the nucleophile attacks the carbocat ion. And then to form our product and then remember I said if we have three steps it is when the nucleophile is basically water it happens that our nucleophile can be water or an alcohol just know that you're going to have step number three but like I said, we are going to explain this looking at an example. Let us look at our first example. Suppose we have T-butyl bromide, which can be written like this, CH3. C bonded with bromine. Reacting with methanol, which is CH3OH. Then we can also represent this using our Lewis structure with the combination of condensed structure. So this simply means that we have three methyls, which is one, two, three. And then we have this carbon, which is this one, bonded to bro bromine. Then we react this with, we can just put it like this, OH. So to show the mechanism for this reaction, by the way, this is SN1. So remember that the first step, we should show the rate limiting step or the carbocat ion formation. Step number one, let us look at our substrate. So we have C, CH3, 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 and our living group here. What will happen is that this will actually leave then you can put double arrows by the way this the fourth reaction will be less than the reverse reaction in this case and then we have our carbocat ion remember that according to the Lewis structure based on the calculation of formal charge if carbon bonds three times, you should know that it will have a positive charge. So in this case, it will be positive, and then plus our living group, Br, having a negative charge. So this is actually the carbocat ion that we are looking for.
and then this is the living group then the next step which is step number two that is when the nucleophile will attack our carbocation since it is positive we are going to have our nucleophile which is methanol will basically attack our carbocat ion in this case the fourth reaction is basically greater than the reverse reaction and then we are going to have CH3 CH3 and CH3 and then it's a bond between oxygen and we have our CH3 make sure you use a different color for the second part of the alcohol CH3 and then we have our H here and then we are going to have lone pairs here now reversing to the Lewis diagram also remember that oxygen is a divalence element it bonds two times if it bonds three times it will have a positive charge so in this case you can see it has three bonds with two electrons which are lone pairs remember my statement i said if it happens that our nucleophile is water or alcohol in this case methanol is an alcohol this is an alcohol so in this case we are going to move to the next step which is step number three step number three we normally say it's a loss of proton to solvent or deprotonation how do we go about doing the deprotonation it is normally referred to final step Let us go back to our product here. How do we deprotonate? We take the very same product we react it with the very same nucleophile we did before which is methanol. So what happens is that we need to use this hydrogen donor. So these electrons here bonding between hydrogen and this oxygen will move from hydrogen to oxygen. And then our nucleophile will attack this hydrogen. the forward and the reverse will be equal and then let us write this whereby it has lost our hydrogen then we are going to have I know that for now it's a bit confusing but we'll look at the second example and try to cover this so we are going to have oxygen and then those two electrons which they came from the bonding between oxygen and hydrogen will actually be here then as you can see that oxygen it has two lone pairs and two bonding pairs then it will have no negative or positive so we have CH3 and then plus hydrogen which is this one bonded with oxygen and then we have this part also and then we have this methyl part and then we're going to have a positive charge this will be our final step and you should know that this final step it happens very fast remember that the rate limiting which is the formation of 
carbocation it normally happens very slow this step here and then the attack of the nucleophile it happens very fast and then all the steps they happen very fast for you to understand this better and to avoid this lesson video being too long refer to lesson 102 of SN1 reaction whereby we are going to start with second example and go through the SN2 mechanism that's it for this lesson video this is Paula SJ thank you very much